Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a simple notepad app in Unity and welcome to episode 5. So in this tutorial what we're going to do is focus on the functionality of our app, i.e. getting it to save when we click the save button. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and with that in mind, let's get to work. So how do we enable ourselves to save whatever we have within our text? Well. The idea is we have to do two things because realistically we need to determine what we need to save and then we actually need to perform the save function itself. And don't forget as well, we need to also load on top of it. So we can't just save it because then we don't really load it again. So we need to do a couple of different things in this tutorial. So let's head to our scripts folder. Let's right click, create and click on C sharp script. And we'll call this save load so it's basically just going to contain the saving and loading function now we have to do this uh, slightly different than how we've done previously in our other script because if you remember although we have a uh, function on there which is the button control right here which is our own method we called it clear text we have to use the start method to actually load the data in. But first we have to actually save it. Realistically, we can get rid of void update and the annotations because we, we don't actually need them. So as we do this, we need to first realize that we are using UI functions. So just like in button control, we put the namespace at the top. We need to do it here as well. Using unity engine.u i semicolon now what we need to do is declare three separate variables so the first variable is going to be a string and a string is a way of basically saving any kind of text so it, it could be number it could be a text it could be anything as long as it defines it as a block of text so the actual um file itself is going to be contained with text even though it could just be numbers it's going to save it as text so let's start by going public string and remember that's a lowercase s because capitalization is important and i'm just going to call this the text semicolon now what we need to do at this point is we need to recognize that the note and the text component are two separate things because again, remember the button control we dealt with input field. However, we actually need to receive data from the text field. So that's also going to be a different um, variable here. So we're gonna need the text and the placeholder. So let's go public game object and let's call it our note semicolon and same again public game object and we'll just call it place holder semicolon make sure we put a space there so if i go back into unity and go to our canvas go to the input field right here we can see placeholder that's where the text is and the text that's where the text is yet again so what realistically is going to happen is when we click the save button the text is going to equal whatever text is in basically here and uh, we're then going to use something called a player pref to save that data because much like the button control if we go on app controls here and the input field that is where we're going to deal with placing the text and even though it's just placeholder I've called it placeholder, I should say. We're going to replace what placeholder says with whatever we save. So let's get this actually working. Now, we don't need voice start right now. We're going to go public and void. And we can call this something that we're going to use. So save note. And open close bracket and open curly bracket. So it would make sense to call this save note because that's exactly what it's going to do. So this means that we have to make the text equal to our note dot get component 
clean spiky brackets, text. Open close bracket, dot text, semicolon. So now we, like I said earlier, we use player prefs to set this. And the way player prefs work is we can declare that we want to set either like a string or integer if we want to do an integer that would be. But obviously this is a notepad, so that wouldn't work here. And we tell it where we want to save it and what we want to save. So we do that by going player prefs dot set string and in brackets and quotes the name of what we're setting. So this can be called anything you want. I'm going to call it note contents. Now we have to make sure that we remember what we're calling this. We absolutely have to remember it letter for letter because if we misspell it at any point later on in the script then this whole thing will not work. So we've named here what we're setting in these quotes. So note contents comma and then what we're saving into there. So in this case it would be the text and close bracket semicolon and let's save that for now. I realize at this stage in uh, script development if you've never you know, been coding before it may become a little bit confusing because of the different things we're doing here but I just want to assure you here that Everything we're doing, I'm trying to explain the best I can. Player prefs are always going to be used for saving or transferring data. And remember, the components are vital here because they're what contain the subcomponents and the information contained within those subcomponents. So realistically, what this method is doing, it's taking whatever is in this component and placing it in this variable. And then what this line is doing is making up a new file name and like think of it as an internal file name and placing that information from the variable into that file. So now what we need to do in void start is do the inverse of that and load the player pref to load our text. So to do that what we need to do is make the text equal to the uh, actual player pref itself. So it works along the same way. So player prefs dot get string. So remember, set is to create, get is to load. And in brackets and quotes, the name of what we say before. I always like to copy it just in case we misspell it at any point. And then quote, close bracket, and semicolon. So now that variable is equal to what we've said. And at this point, we can use the same sort of line that we did with the button control one when we cleared it. So we would have placeholder dot get component. And in spiky brackets, it's going to be input field. So input field, open close bracket dot text equals the text semicolon and save that script. So here we can quite easily see the process of what's happening. So you can think of it as we are literally doing the inverse just with a quick modification when we're loading the text. So now if we go back into Unity and let's add this script, the save load, to our app controls object onto there. And now we just need to set those two variables. So if you remember the text itself, that input field, that's going to work the same way as the placeholder. So we need to drag and drop input field onto there. And our note is going to be, well, let's have a quick look, shall we? So if we load up the app, we can already see what's happened there. So I've been testing this, obviously, and we know how this all works. Um, but obviously I have to test these things before I create anything. And that was my uh, test that you saw right there. But we can see here that if we type our text here, it is quite literally inside the text now. But that is what we have to save. We have to remember that this text is what we save. 
and the input field placeholder is where we load it. So if we go to our note app now and just make sure here, this line right here, the text and input field, these are the two most important things that you have to remember. Cannot stress that enough. Although it may seem like it should be the same, it isn't. It's just how this works functionally. So our note is going to be the text right there. And I'm going to save that scene. When I press play now, it's obviously going to load up what I've previously done and got in the player press once again. But you can see we can still type and do anything. And when we close it, even though we have that, it still loads the original player prep information, as we can see here. So obviously we need to get our save button working correctly. And I'm not sure I like the black text on the button itself, so I'm going to change that to white, I think. And I'm also going to rename the button as well. I'm just going to call it save button. So now we have to get this working. It already has the app controls attached to it, but it currently has the clear text is it's a duplicate of this clear button. So we need to go down here, go to save load and then change it to save note. And I'm going to resave that scene. So if I press play now, again, it will load what we've previously had, but I can type whatever I want. In fact, I'll type something sensible. Jimmy has a new app. This note had app. So now I'm going to save. So this has now been committed to the memory within that player pref that we've called note contents. So even if we come out of this and press play again, it should load in. Jimmy has a new app. This note paid, even <laughs> note paid. <laughs> so we've made a mistake there. So let's change that back to notepad. Click save. That will now be committed to memory. So it will remember that we've made that change and it will load it right there. So even if we completely delete that and close it and press play again, it will still remember. So let's press clear and save. And then let's exit the app. And then let's start up the app again. And we'll have a blank canvas to work on. So that is the functionality of being able to save whatever you've got in your notepad. And I think that is the most important feature of actually having a notepad app, because what's the point of having a notepad app if it doesn't save what you've typed? So next tutorial, what we're going to take a look at is we're going to work a touch on animation. And we're also going to deal with the close button as well as like a little pop up notification to say, do you want to save or do you want to exit? just to give it a little bit more something to it. So until that next tutorial, guys, remember you can always get this script on the website if you have any problems. So until next time, see you around. Thank you very much for watching.